Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Paul Lewis Quinn, loving brother of our good friend Robert Ozzie Quinn, uncle and army veteran, Mary Ann Noto, devoted wife, mother, grandmother, sister of our friend Joe Wexler, and aunt, Dr. Joseph V. Crouchnuk, beloved husband, father of Scranton Times reporter and columnist Boris, grandfather, brother, and uncle, Harry Joseph Michael Kirby, loving husband, father of city employee Lori Reed, grandfather, United States Marine Corps veteran of the Korean War, and 28-year veteran of the Scranton Fire Department. Mark Colin Walsh, devoted son, husband, father, brother, uncle, former member and president of the Scranton School Board, and former Scranton City Council solicitor, and their dear families and friends they leave behind. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held April 24, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received April 18, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, agenda for the zoning hearing board meeting to be held May 8, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Please. Uh, I was asked to announce that the Scranton High School Football Boosters Club, or the Friends of the Scranton Knights, is having their first annual Scranton Knights Pasta Dinner. It will be conducted at Scranton High School in the main cafeteria on Friday, May 3rd, from 5 to 8. Charge is $10, and takeouts are available. That's Friday, May 3rd, from 5 to 8 at Scranton High School. Thank That's you. It. Is there anyone else? Election Day is Tuesday, May 24, 21st. I'm sorry. Be an informed voter by taking advantage of these educational events and candidate debates sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County and the University of Scranton's Political Science Department. All of the following events are open to the public and will take place at the University of Scranton. A Lackawanna County ballot questions panel discussion will be held Monday, April 29th, at 7 o'clock p.m. Political science professors Jean Harris, Ph.D. from the University of Scranton and Thomas Baldino, Ph.D. from Wilkes University will serve as panelists for a discussion exploring the five questions that will appear on the May ballot. The discussion will explain how voters' decisions at the ballot box will affect future government in Lackawanna County. 
Time will be allotted for questions from the audience. In addition to ballot questions, voters will also be asked to select seven members for a Home Rule Charter Study Commission. The League of Women Voters has partnered with the Greater Scranton Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce to gather information on the 38 candidates for the commission, which will be made available online through both the Chamber and League of Women Voters websites. A candidate forum for the Democratic candidates for the office of Lackawanna County Register of Wills will be held on Tuesday, April 30th at 7 o'clock p.m. That is the following day. Four Democratic candidates will appear on the May ballot for this office. One Republican candidate will face off against the Democratic winner in the general in November. Also, a candidate debate involving Democratic candidates for the office of Scranton City Council will be conducted Wednesday, May 8th at 7 o'clock p.m. And finally, uh, the two Republican candidates for the office of Scranton Mayor will debate on Monday, May 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. And the, well, all of the Democratic candidates, I believe there are four, four, for the office of Scranton Mayor will debate on Tuesday, May 14th at 7 o'clock p.m. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Thank you, Council. Good evening. You know, we've taken uh, different roads now and then, but you're still my Council. I, I guess you're stuck with me to the end. Probably like Dillinger's mother was stuck with him. I know you're wondering what kind of nonsense I got tonight to put up with. Well, here it comes. A majority of unconscionable Penn Security Bank board members, in all their wisdom, of course, to rid themselves of this archaic tax burden, have donated. Now, they have donated the bank building on Cedar Avenue. And to all people, they have donated it to Goodwill. The goodwill that has sat on this school for 20 years, not explained where all the money is, and not done nothing except tell us they're going to work on it. That's who's ending up with this building. This, this is just a deplorable, senseless action. It's against the people of this city. It's, it's, a, it's a, evading their duty to pay taxes. This was done last Thursday, if somebody wants to know, you know. But that, that building should have been taken away from the school, I'm talking about, years ago, and sold to somebody credible. It's still sitting there, and it'll probably be sitting there for another 20 years. Th this looks like, were they, what are we going to do with another building like this off the tax rolls? Unless... Somebody suggested the city might buy it from Goodwill for the library. Another one of Doherty's shady deals might, might be in the oven right now. Why else would all this be going on? Goodwill doesn't need it. The city doesn't need it. There's no money for a library. But there's, there's a reason for all this going on. This, this complete evasion to do their duty to pay taxes in this city should be retaliated by the people. We, we need, if, if we use that bank for any reason whatsoever, we should quit. 
This is an attack against the taxpayers. It's against every single one of us to do something like this. They own half that street right around the bank. What if they want to give everything up? You know, it doesn't hurt them. Uh, this, this just, everything just keeps falling down on the taxpayers. And, and here we are broke, you know. This is just, I don't know what can be done about it, but it's, it, it, this has got to stop somewhere. We lost the building downtown for $2 million. I think I forgot what it paid in taxes now. And I don't know what this paid. I didn't even ask. But th this, this is nothing but a deliberate evasion by them to pay city taxes. Well, as, as you know, we had a Tuesday night. The taxpayers had a interesting meeting. Uh, Mr. Cardamone and Mr. Morgan and Ms. Randall were there. And I want to say that as much as I wanted to, I didn't attack her adversely like people thought I would for that was a good behavior. Now, we got uh, uh, Mr. Courtright's going to come back another time, I was told by Ozzy. We got four qualified people wanting the position of leading this city for whatever reasons. I don't know why that anybody would want this job myself. But they, they all were willing to, to accept the $50,000 salary. I can't understand why we voluntarily raised the salary at this time where we need money so bad. I'm not trying to be adverse about it. I just don't understand. In fact, if you ask me, these four people should be sent to Scranton Counseling, and the one that, the one that lasts to the end could, could be the mayor, because this, this is such a thankless, hard job, but I just don't see how anybody could, could accomplish what this city needs. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Our Thank next you. speaker is Lee B. Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have here today is, um, you know, I, I did hear Mrs. Evans talk about city residents today that had passed, and um, I, I don't know if the Council and the Mayor, and I don't want to single out anybody for accolades. You know, I think everybody should be respected. But um, I don't know if it's possible for the city to make a Mark Walsh day for one day on April 4th and the same thing for the Scranton School District because I really think he was a real genuine human being and politics wasn't, I don't, I don't think politics was in the front of his mind. And um, I remember at the school board, I remember all the things the newspaper said about him today. I know people he's helped pro bono and um, that's something he didn't have to do. And uh, I just think he kept giving to the community in any way he could. And I just like to see the Scranton School District, the city of Scranton, acknowledge that a resident like that lived in our city and contributed so much. And, you know, maybe it'll fall on deaf ears and maybe it won't. Maybe somebody on council will go down and talk to the mayor and he might find it to be acceptable. Maybe the members of the Scranton School Board may think that May 4th is a good time to remember a person who, uh, a Scrantonian who gave a lot to the city. I don't think everything should be about, you know, politics. And I think he, he was just a really a great person who showed what leadership really was many times. So uh, that's basically all I have here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Our you. next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, I just too would like to begin uh, <clears throat> echoing uh, some of the comments uh, Mr. Morgan made. Uh, I too would like to pay my respects to uh, Attorney Walsh. Um, he, he certainly uh, is someone I had a great deal of respect for. Uh, when I started attending council meetings years ago, 
um, he happened to be the council solicitor at the time. That's how far back, uh, you know, that it, it takes me. And, uh, you know, I just always remember him as being a very kind individual, uh, someone who uh, was caring and, and uh, a very honest individual. And uh, I know he'll be missed by many in the community, so I, I just want to, uh, you know, express my condolences to all his friends and family and thank him for all of his contributions to the city. Uh, moving on to the agenda tonight, uh, this would be uh, 5B uh, in regards to the uh, project uh, dealing with the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge. We're looking to transfer uh, funds, uh, $287,000 from uh, projects uh, involving uh, the West Side Falcons and um, I believe the North Scranton Little League. Um, I understand that there may be some resentment towards uh, you know the the administration and the council for for taking those funds away from those projects but at the same time I think all of us know full well that you know we've had a lot of problems with the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge and uh, it's it's certainly a dangerous situation right now and it's something that needs to be addressed uh, you know at right right away and uh, from reading the newspaper I do understand that both of these leagues are, are understanding of the situation and they know that this needs to take priority right now. Um, you know, Councilman Laskin brought this to the forefront. Uh, he's been working diligently on this for many months now. And I'm glad to finally see something on the agenda that's going to allow us to put funding towards this because, you know, <clears throat> I, I almost feel sorry for Mr. Laskin because he's, he's gone back and forth with PennDOT and, and DPW and nothing, nobody ever listened to him. It fell on deaf ears. Well, finally, you know, we, we see some actions being taken and his hard work's paying off. And uh, hopefully in the end, this will be resolved once and for all. And, uh, you know, we can relieve a, a potential burden that certainly if, if anything were to happen and this bridge did have to be shut down, um, it's a main artery into the west side of the downtown and that would certainly be an inconvenience for the residents of this city. Uh, in regards to the pilots, uh, we've had many discussions on this uh, when we had our representatives here and uh, even before that. But uh, I bring that up tonight because I know there's some legislation going back and forth down in uh, Harrisburg in regards to... Uh, trying to get the, the nonprofits to contribute more to, to uh, you know, distressed municipalities. And it's my hope that something will come into play and legislation can be passed that will give us the opportunity to get more uh, from nonprofits in the community because certainly, you know, seeing our financial status the way it is right now, uh, we could certainly use their, their help. Um, if, if they have the ability to contribute to the city, um, then I believe that they should uh, be obligated to do so. Um, they're given the services that the taxpayers pay for, and it's only right that they contribute as well. Uh, the final issue I have tonight, uh, and I think we're all going to be talking about this soon as we're, we're going to be heading into the warmer months now. Uh, this is the annual uh, pool discussion we have here. And I just wasn't sure if we've begun having any discussions with DPW as far as what pools we plan on having open this summer. Uh, I know Novembrino and Capalis have been shut down the last couple summers. Uh, Kapaus has been shut down the longest. I believe it's four or five summers now. Uh, we were told splash parks were going in and all sorts of other things. Uh, personally, I'm against a splash park. I, I don't see the, uh, the relevance to it. Um, they were built many years ago to be swimming pools, and, and that's what they should be. Um, so it's my hope that those pools will be open this summer. Um, maybe we can get an answer from Mr. Dewar on that. Um, I know there's an issue of a lack of manpower, supposedly, to, to operate these pools, lack of money. Um, I'm sure there's many caring citizens out there that would like to see their pool open. I don't see why we couldn't, perhaps if the, if the DPW did need assistance in getting these pools cleaned up, um, if we can get neighborhood volunteers or even our neighborhood associations involved in, in assisting the DPW in cleaning up these pools and getting them um, in operation for the kids this summer because I just don't feel that these children in this community should suffer another summer without a swimming pool in their neighborhood. Um, another suggestion I have, I know it's been brought up in the past, uh, perhaps we can consider partnering up with the Scranton School District and uh, have discussions with them as, and, and, and see if they would be willing to uh, assist us in getting these pools open because it affects the children that they educate and that they provide funding for as well. So it affects everyone, all sides. And I think we just can't sit back and let another summer go by and have these children suffer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Yes, ma'am. My name is Richard Hansen. I'm the senior representative uh, for the government of the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant. And I'm here tonight. Could you? And once again, if you. Uh, Rich Hansen, I'm the commander's representative at the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant. It's uh, also known as Chamberlain. And I'm here tonight uh, to answer any questions that anyone may have about the uh, parking. 
permit that we're asking the city for? I know that tonight's supposed to be the second reading, and I believe it's also, you're also going to vote on it. And I just want to make sure that the city understands that we're not asking the park uh, on Mattis or River, only in uh, heightened security conditions. And we really haven't gone to a heightened security condition in, mm -hmm. well, since 9 11. So if we did happen to go to a heightened security condition, we would, in fact, have to use those parking areas. Otherwise, we would, you know, shut down the streets by, you know, doing invasive inspections on all vehicles for the employees. And it's something that we certainly don't want. Mm -hmm. So I'm not asking to park there every day, just, you know, during those heightened security conditions. Well, based on, I believe it was Councilman McGough's suggestion regarding permit parking, we have asked uh, the administration uh, and the mayor if that would be possible so that the employees would be able to park there year-round using permit parking right. and we're waiting for a response on that okay so will the vote be deferred then or oh no okay no no okay um, so if there's no questions just just speaking for myself this to me it seems to be common sense just to, to vote yes on it if it's a you know security issue and it will also make traffic flow easier through Absolutely. that area um, during those times and also you know I stated it since those meters the meters were initially put up they should have never been put there in the first place um, the point of meters is to basically put an extra tax on employees it's to create turnover in a business district um, and then when they were removed and I know myself and Councilman Loscombe brought this up last week the no parking signs that are there now actually aren't even legal um, they never passed council they, they were put up without legislation so hopefully the administration th this I'm sure will pass council right. and, and be signed by the mayor and hopefully the administration will also work towards allowing parking there because it, it doesn't do anyone any good to keep that area vacant um, you know when, when the employees can be parking there right well unfortunately we're, we're down uh, you know in strength about 200 employees since 2009 and 2009 was the height of our uh, employee um, you know numbering uh, our end strength if you will and uh, since then we're, we're down to about 200 now so we do have enough spots on the installation now approximately 250 mm -hmm. uh, you know to accommodate all the employees so it's not an issue not being able to park uh, on the perimeter of the installation however I do want to make sure that you understand that we don't want to shut down the city streets in the case we have to go to a, a heightened security condition and uh, we would have uh, you know stickers on the cars so that if the parking authority would walk by all those cars that are, you know were permitted to park there would be properly marked and they wouldn't have an issue with that hopefully well thank you very thank much you. for coming well, thank you all for your consideration thank and you. your vote appreciate it thank you thank you good evening council dave dobson resident of scranton good evening, good evening. um okay uh last week when I was discussing uh, the uh, pension of the police, I said accidentally it was 25000 And the police and firemen's pension, thanks to Wall Street, lost $25 million. So uh, it's rather nice of them to uh, tell us that our credit is trashed and uh, uh, we have to pay higher interest rates, but uh, I wish they'd assume some responsibility for what they have done. And also, uh, when I criticized the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, I wasn't specific. Uh, in 2010, late 2010, we got a, an insurance policy for my wife uh, in her rim while she was unemployed for uh, uh, with the $2,000 deductible and we went back because she changed jobs just recently and that very same policy and the very same money now had a $7,500 deductible so uh, and uh, I'd also like to uh, thank all the people in Congress that did the uh, 151 amendments and keeping in mind that even in an act of terrorism or crime, you have to pay your own hospital bill. Excuse me, but you could have thought of something better if you had all that time to amend it 151 times. Uh, now, 
Last week, where it was mentioned about uh, vacant lots and letting them go to the public and so forth. But what I'd like to say is that on a non-buildable lot, the taxes are excruciating. Uh, I started out thinking that I was going to get the lot for about 150 a year taxes. Nobody lives on it. It can't be built on. And uh, it started out at about $330 a year, and it's up to $450 a year. So it's a very expensive proposition, and if anybody plans on build, buying one of these lots, it's buyer beware. Uh, it's a nice lot. I, I like it, but every time I look at the bill and think that it's just money going into the till, it's, it's not not what it uh, seemed to be. And, uh, okay, now on that Mattis Avenue, uh, I'd love to see public parking permitted, and I don't see where it would interfere with anybody from uh, General Dynamics. Uh, I think those signs should be just lifted out of there, period. Uh, I've seen years back where people used to park there uh, from General <coughs> Dynamics, and there's nobody else in the area, or no other venue, but say like on a weekend, uh, they have the iron furnaces and so forth, uh, festivals, and you have to park three or four blocks away because there's a no parking sign in front of, on Mathis Avenue. And it, there isn't any shift. I, I understand that they're down to 25% of their workforce currently, so. Uh, you could deal with a, a problem like that if their workforce increased drastically in, on a later, at a later time. And uh, the, last week the housing projects were brought up in Southside and the uh, trash and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, every, all, every one of us owning a house in Scranton has to keep our house in fair condition and, and uh, keep garbage picked up and litter and so forth. Why, sh why should they be exempt from a blight control? So in other words, if we send a blight officer up there and just tell the management that this is not acceptable to have bags of garbage strewn all over and torn apart and blowing all over other people's lawns and their lawn, I, I think that would be a, a totally sound idea. For, for uh, it, there's no reason why people should have to put up with that. And, uh, you know, a lot's been said on nonprofits and so forth. And one of my concerns is that what about nonprofits that preach hate? Do they deserve a tax exemption? Do they really deserve a tax exemption when they're preaching? that other people should be uh, uh, dealt with violently or so forth. Personally, I think that any, any tax exempt that uh, preaches in those terms uh, should have their tax exemption lifted and lifted 10 years back and 15 years forward. Uh, it, it's just a shame that you hear some of these things. And it's not just uh, Islam. It's uh, Westboro Baptist Church shows up at our uh, at our dead uh, uh, servicemen's uh, funerals and protests and says they're burning in hell and stuff like that. It's disgusting, you know. So yes. if they want to preach that, let them pay to some taxes. And once again, sequester all further property from tax exempt irregardless. Please get some kind of conference and we really have to get going on it because in 10 years we're liable to be paying on 50% of the town being tax exempt. Thank you and have a good night. Thank Don't you. forget the box, box, box. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Bill Good Jack evening. with South Scranton Resident, member of the Taxpayer Association. Good evening. Uh, I appreciate last week when some of my questions were addressed immediately after I was done speaking. 
Uh, I hope the same thing happens again tonight, so my time's not interrupted. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining, and I, why they're complaining to me, I have no idea, but they are, about the 12 parking meters on Mulberry Street that have been removed for the University of Scranton. And their main complaint is that the parking meters were placed around the hospitals, and people are, re are required to put money and feed the meters when they go into the hospitals to visit their sick relatives and friends, or otherwise they get tickets and several people have already received tickets. But yet, the teachers, the professors, and the students at the University of Scranton park for free. And first of all, who authorized that? Did it come through city council? Did the city council approve those meters to be removed? Or did the mayor do it on himself? Did standard parking do it? People want to know. They want to know who to hold responsible for those meters, those 12 meters on Mulberry Street to being, being removed and given to the University of Scranton. Basically, you gave whoever did it, basically gave the, city of, uh, the University of Scranton free parking in 12 when, spots. When were they removed? They, they've been removed for quite some time. There's 12 spots on Mulberry okay. Street. Then that, I believe that would have come before city council. Uh, was that when the road was being widened and such? And I, I guess uh, so, but the university would have uh, uh, paid. Oh, oh, my time's not running. No, the university would have paid for those for those spots. Can we can 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 we see some proof of the fact that the university is paying for those? I mean, we've been told a lot of things that I, don't I, seem to ever happen. I don't believe they're paying for them constantly. They paid a lump sum at the time to the city or the Scranton well, Park, more likely the Scranton Parking Authority than the city of Scranton. Well, you know, again, you know, people are upset about this. This is one of the reasons why we have the attitudes and the, and the dissatisfaction in this city because of things like this. The university parks for free, but yet if you go visit a sick relative at a hospital, you have to feed the meter. And so anyway, that's, I'm just, I'm, I'm the messenger, okay? People are asking me. I don't have an answer. I'm not an elected official and never will be. Never want to be, you know, because I'm an honest person. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I guess, uh, I don't know. People who have been asking the questions, hopefully they're watching the meetings and they got your answer. Okay. Uh, Again, back on parking meters, those uh, meters down by the Chamberlain Corporation. You know, it cost us $70,000 to remove those meters, approximately. And it cost us another $70,000 uh, to put them up when you originally put them up. So that's approximately $140,000 in taxpayers' money, where we put the meters up and then we took them down. I say, let's take the signs down. Let's get rid of the signs. People. The, the, the employees at the Chamberlain Park there for years and years and years without a problem. So I say, do what you got to do, whatever you have to do, get those signs removed, and, let, and start allowing people to park there, you know, because it's totally asinine to, to have those signs up there. Uh, you know, we sit here, we all do, we come here, we complain. Uh, about everything in the city because we have a lot to complain about. Uh, you know, we have an outrageous budgets, we have outrageous borrowing, outrageous so on and so forth loans. We can't make payments. I mean, our payroll is over a million dollars every two weeks, which comes to about $28 million a year. We really need to look at that. The elected officials really need to look at that. And someone needs to sit down and renegotiate or, or talk with the city employees because we cannot afford to pay them the amounts that they're being paid. Now, once the city gets back on firm financial situations, again, maybe we can do it. But right now, I mean, we sit here begging for money, asking everybody to help us out, and we give the mayor a $25,000 a year pay raise before we even know if the mayor can do the job. Furthermore, we didn't even know who the mayor's going to be. But yet we gave him a $25,000 pay raise. But on the other hand, we turn around and we say we don't have money. We can't pay this, we can't pay that, we can't pay our garbage fees, 
Uh, we got to raise taxes, we got to do this, but yet we're throwing raises out. That's, that's why people are angry. That's why people are upset. And who's responsible for it? There are seven elected officials. I've said this before. There are seven elected officials in the city of Scranton. We elect all seven of you to, to, to work for us and to make, to make our lives better. And when we see people m making seventy, eighty thousand, ninety thousand dollars $80,000, $90,000 a year, when the average salary in the city is about $24,000, $28,000, it upsets people. Something needs to be done about this. You know, blaming the nonprofits and everybody else, no, we, we got to blame ourselves. We pay too much money. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, Citizen and Taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Agenda item 5B first. Uh, I'm sure that are pretty confident that Mr. Rogan will be speaking to this when it's introduced, comes up for introduction anyway. But um, I stopped attending meetings of the Vacant Property Review Committee when they kept getting canceled because there wasn't a quorum. However, there were always on the agenda items that where people were interested in buying homes and it are buying properties i should say they were somewhere commercial but it's an ex rather expensive process to uh, get the title get a clear title even though it's recouped so it, it becomes a revolving fund but i am definitely against the taking the thirty thousand dollars away from the vacant property review committee if they're not meeting or they can't get a quorum the people who are members need to get down there and we need to start working on that. As I recall when Mary Chalipko was here earlier this year, she said there were something like 300 properties on the condemnation list. Now not all of them are obviously going to be up for uh, demolition, but as I drive around the city, and I did take a different route here tonight, and I, I just, my heart bleeds for some of the people who keep their properties nice and they're next to something that's got broken windows and partially boarded up so I, I am against that 30,000 being removed uh, then moving on um, is again just the, the state the city's in I'm gonna show my age now and tell you that when I was a kid I listened to a radio yes radio we did not have television uh, there was a program called let's pretend on Saturday mornings and I think what we have to do, because when you look at our, at our budget, I, just the expenditure side, I'll be talking more about the budget at, at, as the weeks go on, but of the expenditure side, $51 million goes to employee compensation and workers' comp, $47 million goes to TAN repayment, court awards, and uh, unpaid bills and debt. That leaves a grand total of $11.7 million to pay for all of the supplies and things that are needed to maintain our properties and our roads, and it just isn't enough. So I think council has to lead the way and have a let's pretend meeting with everybody involved, the, the representatives of the workers, and say, look, Here's what we have coming in on a recurring basis that we know is, is going to be revenue that's there. And here's what's going out. And we have this mismatch. Let's come up with a solution. Because if we don't, we are going to end up in bankruptcy. We just cannot keep going. I would be willing to bet we're going to end up with another deficit at the end of this year. And where do we go to get, do we go back to court for a third time? And even if we get court approval, are we going to um, are we going to be able to find anybody to loan us the money? I would assume the reason we don't have that 22 million yet is because we're having a hard time finding somebody to lend it to us. So I think that's something that should be considered, just a, an all-out, no holes barred. We're in this together. Let's get ourselves out of it. And I think there are a lot of places where we could look for more money. I'm going to be talking about this as time goes on too. But one place. Uh, I was alerted to, the, to what's happening or not happening, as the case may be, by an anonymous letter writer who 
says he or she is a senior citizen who manages to pay my property tax and refuse bill on time every year. If the city allows property owners to run up over 10 years of taxes and take no action against these property owners, why should the rest of us pay our taxes on time? And that's certainly a, a legitimate and natural concern. Now, the condemnation, the city of Scranton condemned property policy, right here, says when a condemned property is being rehabilitated, the owner must furnish the Department of Licensing, Inspections, and Permits and the Zoning Bureau of the City of Scranton with an affidavit that is signed and notarized stating the following, and I'm only going to read two of the bullets. One is a copy of the tax certificate verifying that all City of Scranton, Scranton School District, and county taxes are paid in full. Second, owner of the property must present himself or herself to the city treasurer to verify the taxes and waste are paid in full. Um, there's also a letter, may I finish this? Thank you. There's also a letter from the city solicitor um, saying that uh, there were uh, uh, several properties that were uh, abandoned and that the, this response is a notice to the trustee, creditors, and any other third party that in the event any entity becomes the record title holder of the following properties, then the, then the entity must comply with the city's LIPS department condemned property policy ordinance and all city of Scranton zoning regulations in order to have the condemnation removed. Now, uh, I also checked on uh, one, one entity bought four of the six properties, uh, two of which have had building permits issued. And I did not check all today of all of the, um, all of the taxes that are owed on all four properties, but just of the two that have received building permits and wait, like, just bear with me for a second. It's here. Okay, here we go. Uh, one of the properties, and this is as of 20 uh, through uh, 2011, owed $23,384.20 and another $381.52 to the sewer account. Um, the other property, I must have left it home on the table, but it was about $35,000, as I recall. Yet they're able to get permits. They weren't, I checked with zoning, they haven't come before zoning. So why do we have these policies if people are just doing whatever the heck they want? Now that's a lot of money to slip out, and that's only a couple. How many times has this been repeated? And I've got other similar things that I'll be bringing to council on a regular basis henceforth. So thank you for your time. And if you can, uh, you know, provide that specific information, the amount of taxes due, what type of taxes, the addresses and such, I think, you know, our office can be looking into it with LIPS, why, why they've been issued permits and that they are in violation of ordinances. Okay. And we'll I'll try to get, scan we'll try to get the yeah, answers for you. I'll scan them in and, and forward them to Nancy. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tom Lomvarsky, and I've been here for all of City Council's caucuses. I was here when the manager for the parking garages addressed you. I heard him tell you that there was no specific plan to get the parking authority out of the hole. He also told you that you will have to come up with money so that they could pay their bond issue. What I didn't hear is what his qualifications for the jobs are. We know he's making $100 an hour, but what qualifies him 
to get that kind of an hourly rate. I was also here when the three representatives from the state were here, our three representatives from the state were here. I heard them tell the city or the city council that there was nothing they could do to help them out. Seeing as it was PEL who really put Scranton in the hole, I think there is something those three representatives should be doing to help us out. I also was here two weeks ago when a person came up and asked to have five meters taken out so he could have an entrance to a parking lot from Penn Avenue and an exit on Linden Street. I heard city council ask him if he would help contribute to the loss of revenue. And he abruptly replied, no. Those meters will bring in about $150 a week. Where are we going to make up that revenue? We keep losing revenue and no way of making it up. During the past year, City Council has gone to the county commissioners with three different plans to help out the city. And you were flatly turned down on all three. I don't know what's going on, why no one wants to help out the city of Scranton. There must be something going on. Are we going to be made an example of or something? No one knows? Okay. The, the manager for the parking garage was asked if he would reduce his salary. And he told you flatly, no. I don't know why people come to, well, does city council know if he is charging his rate for appearing here that night? No. That's a good question. We, we don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. We don't know that. You don't know. Can we find out? We can certainly ask Mr. Washoe. Okay, we have at least six speakers here tonight that came on their own time. They don't get paid for it. I think with what this county has provided for him, I think he should be willing to help us out a little bit. And I thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Craig, if you would uh, forward a, a letter to Mr. Washoe posing that question, please. And also, if you could add to that, uh, if he would be charging to respond as well. Chrissy. Buddy, I missed you last week. Yeah, where were you? Hey, Take the night off. We got, got it. clobbered. 22 not the way out. <laughs> Kenny sent you a nice hat I have for you. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, uh, Frank, can I one question for you, Frank? Okay. We need, we need to pick up for little kids around the city. Like a pick up for little kids, Frank. I need something for the little kids to play around down there. Little kids to play around with. Thank you. Okay, we'll you. work on that, Chrissy. Is there anyone else? <coughs> Mrs. Craig? 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, a, a rare occasion, I, I do agree with Mr. Morgan. Um, I know in his, in his own quiet way, Attorney Walsh has had a great impact on the city of Scranton, um, serving in many capacities for the, to the citizens of the city of Scranton 
And I, I too think that he should be honored for this dedication to the city and to its residents. Um, and hopefully um, something will be done through the city to, to honor this uh, gentleman. Um, secondly, uh, rental registration. I did contact uh, people at rental registration. And unfortunately, this week was uh, a little bit of a difficult time for people working there. Um, but I did receive, the, the one thing I did receive back from them was that as of April 25th, uh, 2013, we have received $99,500 in rental fees. Um, the amount budgeted for 2013, I believe, is $100,000. Um, so we're very close to reaching that budgeted amount, and uh, I believe that there are still, you know, numerous outstanding um, fees. So uh, we will probably will reach that budgeted amount, and I will. Um, continue to ask for further information uh, about the program. And last thing, I uh, did receive a note uh, that uh, apparently the fla a fla American flag that was flying over the Vietnam Veterans Monument in Nayog, Nayog Park is apparently no longer there. I don't know if it was taken down, uh, whether it was, you know, by Parks and Recreation, or um, what happened to it, but uh, I will I will contact uh, the uh, Mark Dewar tomorrow to find out the status of that and um, if if there is a replacement to to be made at that memorial. And that's all. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Do you have any motions or comments? Yes, just a few. Uh, Mr. McGough, when you follow up on the flag, if the city does not have another one, could you let me know the size? And um, I'll purchase the flag uh, for the memorial if we don't have one. I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are replacements available. Uh, I know in the past that when flags had become tattered and whatever that there were. But, yeah. but thank you for Absolutely. the offer, and I will make that uh, known Absolutely. to Mr. Dewar. Um, just a couple brief items tonight. Um, the first, as numerous speakers mentioned, um, my condolences to the Walsh family. Um, I didn't know Mr. Walsh as well as, as some others in the room, um, but every time I had a conversation with him, it was uh, very kind, very enlightening, and uh, he's a very smart, caring person that, that will be missed in the community. Um, just two items of business for tonight. The first one is um, the item on the agenda regarding the West Lackawanna Bridge. Um, we did request from OECD a list of all of the accounts um, to look if there were alternate sources of funding this project. Um, I know I, I spoke to Mr. Loscom, and I know he, he had the same concerns as me, and I'm sure many other colleagues might as well. My concern is that we're, we're going to be taking away $200,000 of it from demolition of hazardous structures, which and so there's no secret that blight is one of the biggest issues throughout the city. Also, as was mentioned by a speaker, the vacant property review and Westside Falcons and North Scranton Little League. These are worthy projects and worthy groups that were funded. Um, now, it, it does say that some of the other ones, some of the projects were not eligible. Um, and I did re just receive this from Linda today um, she did ask that I call, so I do plan on giving her a call tomorrow morning to get a little more information to see if it could be done another way. Um, I will vote to introduce the legislation this week and, uh, you know, hopefully find a, another way to fund it through working with OECD or try to off find some offsets where the, the cuts aren't as drastic, especially for, for me the big one is the demolition of hazardous structures in the Little Leagues. Traveling through the city, you're lucky if you go one block without seeing a, a vacant home that's in need of demolition. Um, some blocks in the city have multiple homes that, that need to be demolished. And when we appropriate funds for the CDBG program, one of the areas where we've been focusing a lot, actually the top two areas that council has focused to put a lot of money was paving and blight reduction. They're, they're the two of the biggest concerns that everyone in the city has. 
And not only does a, a, a vacant home you know, look bad, but it, it reduces property values in the neighborhoods and it causes safety issues. Um, fires that could collapse. So hopefully there, there is a, a middle ground that can be found here. Um, I know I'll definitely be, be in touch with Linda and um, hopefully we can find a resolution on that issue. And one issue, it's not so much city related, but it's just something I, I thought to bring up because it's been in the news. Um, I'd just like to commend um, local universities for taking the name of Bob Mello off um, some of the buildings. And um, I would request, and if, with my colleagues agreement, that Lackawanna College um, changes the name from Mellow the Theater to some name honoring veterans in our community. Great, thank you, Mr. Jackowitz. Well, I know they took the name off, um, and I know with the park there was a proposal, there was a group out there that was organized to try to have it named after veterans. I don't know if it was, just, there was one to have it named after a specific person who fought for the country and died, and there were others who were pushing just for a, a veterans park. And uh, I hope that the officials at the local universities, now that Mr. Mello's name is off those buildings and, and off those monuments, that it, it should be changed to honor people who actually did sacrifice um, for the country. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. And thank you, Councilman Rogan. Councilman Loscom, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, just briefly, I would like to uh, also echo my colleagues and some speakers from the audience on my condolences to the uh, family of Mark Walsh. I did know Mark personally for, for quite a few years, and uh, you know, he was always a gentleman, always willing to help. And in spite of his health problems, he always, you know, kept the high road and, and uh, you know, looked at the positive things. And he was always an inspiration. And my, my heart goes out to his family and, and relatives and friends. Um, also, two of my former colleagues, uh, two retired firefighters, have passed away this past week, too. One was mentioned, uh, Harry Kirby and uh, Jake DeQuino. And, uh, you know, they were both fine men who served the city well, and I would like to send my prayers out to their families also. And just uh, lastly, uh, the West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge, as Mr. Rogan stated, uh, we do have concerns. Nobody knows I've been more concerned about that the past few years than, than most. And... Uh, you know, ironically, there's this, and, and it is an emergency, we have to get this taken care of. But as of yet, nothing has been done to barricade the area of concern. I mean, it's still a dangerous situation at this time where we're trying to get funding to do this. Um, there's still no barricade set up there. I think that has to be done immediately to keep people off that north sidewalk of West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge. Um, in the meantime, we do, again, I have some questions on some of the um, funding sources for this here. Um, this prob problem didn't happen overnight. There are opportunities, I think, missed over the past few years to get the proper funding to do this. And as Mr. Rogan stated, we just received some information today, and uh, we will be working closely together to try and work out uh, the funding sources for this. It does have to be taken care of, although I was assured by the uh, PennDOT engineers that the, the road structure itself is not in danger. It's the pedestrian area that, that is the dangerous spot. But. You know, it's been ongoing for years. If you look back in, in the, uh, and I just briefly looked at uh, what Ms. Abley gave us today, they had some funding put in there back in 2006 that has not been used yet for the West Lock 1 Avenue Bridge. So we do have several questions, several issues. Uh, I will be voting to introduce it, but I do not want to see uh, some of these worthy projects that we had placed in there stripped away. And uh, I believe we will be able to work something out for everybody's interest. And, uh, you know, that's all I have to say on it. But I will be voting to introduce it, and we do have some homework to do beyond that. And there's a lot of questions on, on some of the funding. 
And that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, I do. Um, first, I'd like to express my deepest condolences to the family of Mark Walsh. Um, Mark Walsh was a great man who served the city selflessly. And as Mr. Morgan and Mr. McGough mentioned, I do think that we should have a Mark Walsh Day in the city of Scranton. And if we could um, contact the mayor's office and see if that is something that can be arranged, that would be greatly appreciated. Secondly, uh, the status of the city. Financially, uh, in the bank right now, we have $9.9 .9 million. And we have $490,000 in accounts payable as of this week. Obviously, um, in, obviously, at this point in time, we're receiving a lot of real estate tax revenue, being that it's real estate tax season. And we're also receiving uh, refuse revenue. And in the future, that will slow down. That's why there's, uh, at this point, an abundance of cash and not much in accounts payable. Uh, next order of business. Back on uh, the 12th of April, regarding the Blue Cross contract, we had sent correspondence out to our city controller, Roseanne Novembrino, and she did uh, respond in response to our letter regarding the Blue Cross contract. This was properly bid out and the contract was signed. Um, she did inform us that she tried to obtain a copy of the contract but was unsuccessful and that she felt that this matter should be referred to the law department. So Mrs. Craig, if we could please refer this matter to the law department, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, Councilman Joyce, uh, actually uh, our office, Mrs. Craig specifically, uh, has been working on this now uh, diligently, almost daily. Um, I know I made the initial request um, quite a while ago. And um, we have been in touch with both Blue Cross and uh, the BA. And according to a response we received from Blue Cross, they should be providing it any day. So okay, great. We've, we've already taken the channels on that. But I think it's important that you brought up the point that not even the city controller had a copy of that contract. It seems very difficult to locate for some reason. Yeah, I'd agree. Also, uh, we received correspondence uh, to inform us that bids were open on Friday, April 19th, 2013 in City Council Chambers for the cutting of South Scranton Albright Plot and Green Ridge Levees for a two-year seasonal contract. And Dunbar's Evergreen Landscaping was the only bidder and their price for this bid was $28,800. And finally, we have a few requests. Um, number one, in regard to pools, as for Mr. Miller uh, brought up earlier, if we could send a letter to um, the mayor's office and Mr. Dewar asking which pools will be open this year. And also, we had a... Um, concern from a resident regarding speeding in front of John Whittier School in the 800 block of Orchard Street and also um, speeding in uh, Naog Park. So if we could ask uh, uh, Chief Graziano if he could keep, this er keep these two areas in mind for uh, a possible patrolman to go out and visit and monitor. That would be greatly appreciated. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, the Office of City Council received legislation from the city administration related to the recent food truck controversy. Because I have asked Council Solicitor Hughes to review the three proposed ordinances. They do not appear on tonight's agenda for introduction. 
These ordinances include, first, the repeal of file of council number 112 of 2009, the previous ordinance which provided for payment of an annual license fee for public eating or drinking establishments and established annual application and renewal requirements, among other items. Second, uh, the amendment of sections of the city code governing peddling and soliciting within the city of Scranton to include definitions of a food truck and food cart, setting hours of operation and proximity of food carts and food trucks to store buildings, and establishing an annual license fee for these types of businesses. And third, a new ordinance meant to replace the repealed 2009 ordinance, which contains similar verbiage included in the previous two ordinances. And again, after review and correction by our solicitor, these ordinances may be placed on council's agenda for its May 2nd meeting. If so, seventh order reading and final approval would occur on Thursday, May 16th. During the intervening time, I ask any interested owners of eating or drinking establishments in the city to meet with owners of food trucks and food carts to discuss the ordinances proposed by the city administration and offer council chambers as the location for this dialogue. The meeting will be solely among the business owners and they can determine the date and time. Their final recommendations can be submitted to City Council for its consideration of amendments to the proposed legislation. My hope is to see these businesses arrive at a solution that is fair to each of them. I firmly believe that all businesses should be welcomed within our city. Further, they should complement, not cancel out one another. If the Office of City Council is not in receipt of the recommendations of the city business owners, on or before Monday, May 13th, City Council will proceed with the legislation and its own amendments, if any, to a final vote on May 16th. Uh, next on tonight's agenda for introduction is item 5B an ordinance for transfer of CDBG funds for the West Lackawanna Avenue bridge project, specifically the repair of a crumbling wall and sidewalks. And last week, I asked my colleagues, specifically Councilman Rogan, who is chair of this particular committee, and Councilman Loscombe, because he had done so much legwork leading up to this project, to review CDBG projects and accounts and determine whether other accounts might be tapped for this project, either in addition to or in place of the accounts chosen by OECD and the administration. They will submit their recommendations to our office in the near future in order that council will proceed with this vital legislation in a timely manner since the bridge repair project is a high priority to city residents. And finally, um, I believe there was earlier discussion regarding the American flag over the Vietnam Veterans Monument in Nayog. <coughs> if I'm not mistaken, I believe I have a flag at home that was given to me by um, an army officer who served in Afghanistan. And um, I can donate that flag then, and there won't be a need of a new purchase. And that's it. 5B, amending file of council number 41, 2008, file of council number 40, 2010, File of Council Number 53, 2011, entitled An Ordinance Authorizing the Mayor and Other Appropriate Officials of the City of Scranton 
to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Home Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grant Program by transferring $287,000 from projects 09-05.8 Westside Falcons, 12-05.8 Westside Falcons Roof, 12-05.8 Westside Falcons Paving, 12-05.22 North Scranton Little League, 12-235.A SRA slash Vacant Property Review Committee, 11-99 Demolition of Hazardous Structures to Project 12-01 West Granton Avenue Bridge Project, excuse me, West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge Project. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a cooperation agreement between the City of Scranton Municipality and the West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch WSHPNW organization in order to file an application for financial assistance with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Economic and Community Development for a Keystone Communities Elm Street designation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Yes, on the question. I would just like to commend the, the Neighborhood Watch and West Scranton for the good work they've been doing. And there's, there's no doubt that Main Avenue and West Scranton has changed um, for the worse through the last decade and uh, even longer. And somebody <clears throat> who lives in that part of the town and uh, travels that area every day, I think this is definitely... Um, Definitely welcome, and um, I know for myself, and I know uh, council and the administration will be doing everything we can to try to assist with revitalizing that part of West Granton. And I would also like to commend the West Granton High Park Neighborhood Watch, especially um, uh, Karen Foster and Mike Foster for their uh, dedicated work that they do uh, with the watch. They have a great organization. They're dedicated. To, to making Westside a better place and all of the members of the watch should be commended for their actions. And also I believe it's uh, Tom Borthwick and Greg Evans that are co-chairing this project. Oh, okay, so sorry. I, if, well. Sorry that I forgot to mention them and I'd also like to <coughs> commend Tom Borthwick and Greg Evans as well. And I would just like to echo my colleagues with all the, <laughs> without dragging this any further. Definitely it's a worthwhile project and uh, I, I believe we'll all be behind it. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. <clears throat> 5D, authorizing the City of Scranton to make application to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for traffic signal <clears throat> approval for the temporary traffic signal at the intersection of Cedar Avenue, State Route 3023, Scranton Expressway ramps, State Route 8025, and Orchard Street to remain as a permanent traffic signal. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yeah, I just uh, very briefly, uh, those, those signals are now operational. And um, one of the things I think that will be interesting is to see how, um, and Forgive me, but I can still only refer to it as Chamberlain. Um, how the traffic flow is as workers are coming in and out of Chamberlain, uh, you know, and, and see how those signals work at those times. So um, take a look at that as well. Thank you. Is there anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Horsepower Harley-Davidson Incorporated to lease five police package motorcycles. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, 
All those in favor of introductions signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title. File of Council Number 18, 2013, an ordinance transferring funds from Fund 01, City of Scranton, Penn Security, TAN A, and, and Fidelity Bank 2012, TAN accounts, which projects are completed and no longer needed for the conduct of city business, and abolishing and closing said accounts, and transferring the funds remaining in said accounts to the PNC General Funding Checking Account listed below. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 19, 2013, an ordinance establishing a no parking zone along the westerly side of the 1700 block of North Washington Avenue beginning from the end in line of pin number 13518-030-019 northward to the corner of the 1100 block of Electric Street, westward and southward ending at the end line of pin number 13518-030-017 on the 1800 block of Wyoming Avenue. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. <coughs> Seventh order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, resolution number 15, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a memorandum of understanding between the Department of the Army Scranton Army Ammunition Plant and the City of Scranton to allow parking along Mattis Avenue and River Street where no parking signs are present. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 16, 2013, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of a certain capital project for the benefit of St. Mary's Villa Nursing Home Incorporated, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by St. Mary's Villa Nursing Home, Incorporated, to have the project provided by and financed through the authority, designating the mayor of the city or, in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. As chair for the committee on rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 17, 2013, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic, 1147 The Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, for removal of existing signage located on left side facade, replaced with new signage of the same dimensions, black and white color scheme, and changed business name on existing awning to match dimension of 10 inches high by 7 feet wide at 414 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. 
What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Laskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Janet, could you get me a copy of the, the ordinances um, that you mentioned?